been on <laughs> of my life. And everything we do is an adjustment. There's always change going on, whether we like it or not. And I really feel like that since I no longer could live alone in my house in Oklahoma City, my daughter arranged for me to come here. And I really think that God placed me here because I've never met such a sweet group. Mm -hmm. Everybody's so nice. I appreciate you. Um, I kind of made my little uh, conversation with you into categories. And the first category is missions and missionaries. Whatever you say someone was a missionary, or you tell somebody you had been, you almost get a step back. <laughs> Don't touch me. You know? <laughs> and um, I just wanted to tell you that sometimes God takes a lot longer to prepare some people to go than he does others. And my definition of a missionary is not very dramatic. It's someone who's a Christian who leaves home to share Christ someplace else because we have a lot of missionaries in the United States that did that. And they're going to travel the areas and spreading the gospel where nobody else will. But a um, little background, I grew up in Oklahoma City, small family, one sister, um, went all through, all through high school in Oklahoma City, and I love it. I love Oklahoma City. We grew up together, <laughs> the city and I. My parents were so careful to give us everything we needed. Not everything we wanted, but everything we needed. And um, they were very supportive of what we did. And I appreciate that. However, they, they were very good, moral, hardworking, honest, dependable people Church was not a priority for them, and so we didn't go to church. And once in a while, my sister and I would walk a couple of blocks to a little Methodist church near our home. But you know, I, I felt very uncomfortable. We'd go to Bible school, and we'd get teased because we didn't know anything about the Bible, you know. Mm -hmm. And sometimes whenever we'd leave Bible school, uh, Bible school, it was on a Sunday. Well, then there would be the congregation in there, and boy, I never got near that, you know. <laughs> but anyway, when I was 12, I developed a real interest in knowing about Jesus and about God and their relationship. And the, oh, get this, the only scripture I ever heard was during the Christmas programs. And because I had long blonde hair, I got to be the angel several times. And so I remembered, I memorized that scripture in Luke that announces the birth of Jesus. Um, anyway, Mother got me a Bible for my 12th birthday. King James Version, which I really had no idea what it was saying, but I had a Bible. When I was 14, my oldest cousin, and there were three girls that lived just a block from us, she learned to drive, and her name was my name too. We were both named Donna Lovelace. But we started going to the first Lutheran church in downtown Oklahoma City. And because we were older, for too old for the cataclysm class, we met in the pastor's office and there were five of us all together and got instruction and doctrine and all that. And then we were all five baptized at the same time. The Lutheran Church is not extremely, at least the one that we went to, was not extremely evangelical, but they used a great deal of scripture in their liturgy. And boy, I learned a bunch of scripture just that way because it's easier to remember it if you sing it, I think. 
Anyway. When I was 17, I met Ben Mosley. He had been, he had spent one year at Oklahoma Baptist University. And at the beginning of that summer, when I was 17 and had one more year of high school, um, he prayed with his dad and surrendered his life to the ministry, whatever it was, wherever it was. And we met through a friend, and uh, on, my, on our second date, he said, Are you a Christian? Yes. A Lutheran. And he says, What do Lutherans believe? He's a Southern Baptist, by the way, but not a judgmental person. And um, so I recited the Apostles' Creed, and he said, Well, so that sounded to me, you know. He said, that's great. He said, but when we're married, you'll have to be a Baptist. <laughs> and I said, okay. <laughs> and I was still 17 when he gave me my engagement ring for Christmas. He was, he had, was getting into the Korean <coughs> conflict and went to Korea and served as a chaplain's assistant and worked with the orphanages and stuff like that and just loved it. So right after he got home, we got married and we went to Baylor. <laughs> and um, Ben worked through Baylor and got his, what was it, bachelor's. And then we went to the seminary, the Baptist seminary in Fort Worth and he got his bachelor's and then master's. And then way down the road, he got his doctorate in divinity. But that had to wait for kids and bills and all that stuff. You know. Anyway, he loved to meet new people everywhere. And one day, I know if you were in the Bible study, you probably heard this part. But um, one day he was at the gym at the church. We had gone, ended up back at his home church, a large established historical church in Oklahoma City. And he said, he was at the gym playing with some of the guys. And he called me and he says, hi, are you sitting down? And I said, yes. You know, you really wonder what that means, don't you? Are you sitting down? I got a letter from Jenny, and Jenny and John Mills were a younger couple who had become missionaries and were teaching at a Baptist boarding school right outside of Monrovia, Liberia, West Africa. Okay. Anyway, she said, our pastor is going back to the United States, and I, she said, it's two in the morning, and I can't get you off my mind, Ben. I want you to consider coming here and being the Bible teacher, pastor of the church, 500 children, by the way, uh, and um, just pray about it. Well, he said, what do you think? <laughs> <laughs> well, I loved our church. We had served there nine years. He was associate pastor, youth director, uh, athletic director. Um, once in a while, he even uh, refinished the gym floor. You know, he was really busy. Had a lot of counseling. Lots of kids saved became Christians. And we found a real cute house. We had three little girls, and I redecorated it. And I said, well, let me pray about it. You know, it was in an ideal situation. Hmm. So I prayed about it, and we applied. And since Ben already had all of his education, including Hebrew and Greek and all that stuff, <sighs> We were on our way to missionary training in four months. Mm. Sold our house the first time we put it up on market. And um, we went to Georgia. We really had it rough there. We went to Callaway Gardens, which is a fabulous resort. And we lived in one of the, the uh, rented, uh, rental cabins. But we went during the winter time. That was a slight month. And, um, so then we, right after the new year, we went on, and, and this was a long time ago, 
we got, before we left, I remember one of the last things we did at Trinity, our church, was everybody gathered in the fellowship hall and we watched the moon landing 69. Mm. But anyway, uh, when we were in missionary training, the kids had to go on and start school in a little Pine, by, Pine Mountain, which was just about this big, but it was by Callaway Gardens. And uh, we learned the logistics of linguistics, how different languages use different parts and muscles in your mouth to make the sounds that they make. We had, I remember I had a suit with, uh, what do you call them, earphones, what do you call them? Say, you know, and I thought, Say to do, 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 do. And, you know that was for about an hour. It was, and what's so funny? We weren't going uh, to a place we had to learn another language. I'll tell you why in a minute. But we did anyway because we had to learn their version of English. But anyway, and we had people come in and talk to us about relationships. Uh, about scripture, about relating to the culture we were going to, health, it, just name it. We, we, when our children were in school, we were in school for the four months. And away we went. Uh, we went, we flew into Monrovia after we had, they were very generous. They let us stop first in, um, Three places I can't remember right now. Netherlands, I know that we went to the. Well, we spent the night there, and we got to go to the Rembrandt Museum and stuff like that. And anyway, three places. The last stop was at the Canary Islands, mm -hmm. and then we went on down to Liberia, which I'm going to show you the way Africa would look to you. You remember how Africa is shaped like this? Well, Liberia is right on this hump this corner mm -hmm. in West Africa. Uh, by the way, the missionaries, after you've been there a while, had some experiences, we would say, wah, wah, and that meant West Africa wins again. <laughs> <laughs> but we got there at the school, and it was like a college campus. There was a large building in the center, and it was two stories high and it had classrooms. And then there was a shorter building on the third floor and that was their library and there were windows all around and you could look out on the campus. There was a little boy's dorm and big boy's dorm. Little girl's dorm, big boy, a big girl's dorm. And um, they were required to take Bible. So before I knew it, I was doing a survey of the Old Testament to ninth graders. Can you imagine that? And the book, my reference book, was about this thick. <laughs> and so I really had to do a lot of studying, which didn't hurt me one bit. But, uh, but before we got there, I forgot to tell you, uh, somebody asked me to repeat this story. When Ben was in college, and then when he was in seminary, he preached at any place anybody asked him to preach. And so we had two churches. We went to one one Sunday and one the other, down by Austin, Texas. And um, Ben would preach, and uh, the most memorable church we were ever, my husband was ever the pastor was, was uh, half an army barracks. It had been cut in two, hauled to a, a cow pasture, and then the, the cut place was just walled in. And they had strings with yellow lights and beat up old wooden benches. And um, if it was really muddy, they would call us and say, can't come today. The first time it was really muddy, Ben, ben got, went down there and got stuck. So they used a tractor and pulled him out and sent him home. <laughs> that was about 90 miles, I think, from our house. And um, that was when we were in Baylor. 
Anyway, uh, he preached, and there I sat. I thought, you know, this. I never. I just never. I never thought that I'd be in a church like this. And cattle out in the front yard, and barren, and ugly, and muddy. No paving or anything. And Ben would preach about different subjects. And I was assigned the task of criticizing what he said, how he said it. Not, you know, I mean, not, not negatively, but mm -hmm. assessing, assessing his yes. sermons. And so one time, and then we had to take that long drive back to Waco. And uh, we were in the car, and we always talked about everything. But he said, what do you think about that sermon tonight? And I said, I don't know what I think. I said, I just don't know what I think about anything that has to do with God. And he says, well, don't worry about it. God loves you. He had faith even when he was five. He prayed on the way to kindergarten. <laughs> but anyway, uh, we got to bed about midnight. He, he went, it took him about 30 seconds to go to sleep. He was one of those. And uh, I just said out loud to myself, <laughs> if there's a God, I've just got to know. And the room started very slowly filling up with light. Wow. I, this sounds like something I got from a book, but I never heard of this before. It began to fill up with light, and all of a sudden, I realized that I was looking down at Ben on our bed. And I got, I got higher than that little duplex had, a ceiling. Mm -hmm. And then and it was just beautiful light. And there was Jesus in white. And I was sitting on his lap. And he had his arms around me. And nothing was said. And I just sat there. And there was no doubt in my mind that Jesus loved me. Mm -hmm. And because I didn't have a church background, it did not mean a thing if I was willing, you know. And so after I finally got back in bed, <laughs> I woke Ben up and I said, did you see that? And he said, see what? And I told him, and he kissed me on the cheek, and he said, don't you God loves you? And went to sleep. <laughs> you know, but I, I needed affirmation. I, I was... A straight kid. I was a straight A student. I did not do any of the vices that a lot of kids did. And I feel like that God rewarded me with my husband. I really do. I there's no doubt about it. But anyway, in, in Monrovia, let's see. Liberia was formed when President James Monroe was in office and he offered two ships. Uh, to take any slaves that wanted to go back to West Africa mm -hmm. because most of the slaves were sold by other Africans to this, the slave owners and Liberia was just about as close as you could get, you know. And uh, so there were two types of people there, the Americo Liberians who had been slaves and they had a lot more Moxie than the native people, so they immediately conquered everybody and took over. And so they formed a republic and they called themselves the Lone Star Republic. So they had a Lone Star flag also. Mm. And um, it was corrupt, of course. <laughs> but so much for that. The only time it really bothered, oh, we did get to meet President Talbert. President Tubman was, had been there eons as president, and everybody took their own uh, dash, uh, their own, whatever they could grab, we'll put it that way. <laughs> well, he died, and then President Talbert was initiated, or inaugurated, and he had been president of the Baptist World Alliance. Lovely, gentle, sweet man. And whenever he came out to our, we had chapel every morning, when he came out to visit, when Ben was the new pastor, Ben met him at the back of the, uh, what we call the 
it was auditorial, it was an on purpose thing. A president Thomas took him by the hand and they walked hand in hand all the way up to the stage. And Ben says, It's the first time I ever held hands with a man in my life, you know. How <laughs> <laughs> so it was. It was super sweet. Later, uh, we were home not very long after our tour and they had a civil war and he was killed. A lot of the, the uh, government people were murdered and a lot of people too, but we, we missed that. And I'm, I'm, I'm not sorry we missed it, it was horrible. But anyway, Monrovia was a capital city. It tried real hard to be a modern city. It was right on the ocean. Filthy, trash, you know. Uh, you, if you've traveled overseas, you've seen those places. Stink. <laughs> oh, people everywhere. And then after we got out of Benrovia, we had to cross an area that was in a bridge, and it went over Bushrod Island, which was a fish processing place. And anyway, we finally learned when we go, it was about 45 minutes from our campus. We just made it a habit to let me get out of the car fat, uh, first when we got home because I'd go throw up. <laughs> and um, that lasted about a month and I lost 15 pounds in mm. my first month. Mm. But anyway, I finally got over that. You know, you can if you have to. <laughs> Anyway, uh, our campus was lovely. It had been formed by a Liberian man, a preacher, and I don't know much about the history, but it had a pretty old history. And there was an atrocious statue of him right in the middle of the whole area. <laughs> Somebody had really done a good job with plaster, but uh, it was called Rick's Institute. And so Ben taught all of the senior high, uh, the high school, and I taught, first I taught uh, Old Testament, and then I had a semester of teaching home ec, teaching them to sew and to sew in a pattern. For some reason, that was a really high step if you could sew with a pattern. And I made, they asked me, they put some material up to each other and cut it out and it looks great. But they wanted to use patterns. Well, I went in to see the sewing machines and every one of them had been stripped of everything that they could get off of them, you know. Because oh. a lot of them had these little sewing machines that you power. I like that. So I went, to, they did have a singer store there, so I went and bought every kind of stuff that looked like it would fit on the machine and I rebuilt all the machines. And then we started having classes. I also taught the senior girls in uh, Sunday school. I also, first I led the, I led the senior high choir and we got to go to Monrovia and sing on the radio one time. But then we had a young girl come who was really appointed to be the music director. So I played and she directed. And it was just so, so great because I'd never done any of that stuff before, you know. And uh, let's see, I, I know I'm gonna take too long, so I'm not gonna do that if, if I can get around it. <laughs> okay, <clears throat> then Jen and we got there. Uh, our girls went into Monrovia, they had a bus that uh, the campus had a bus that took the, the missionary kids into the American Cooperative School. So they were going to school with uh, the children of all the ambassadors from different countries, from the people. There was a big oil refinery there. So all of the oil people, it was an interesting mix of English speaking people, good, good school. So they went in there every day. They first had long blonde hair. <laughs> and uh, about the second week, we were invited to 
to see a, a ceremony of welcome, welcoming the young girls who had just gotten into puberty who would go to Bush school and they would be sequestered for a couple of months, I guess, and learn how to use the, how to live if they had to in the jungle. They learned how to find food, you know, all that stuff you see on National Geographic. Mm -hmm. And so they'd come back to their village and um, they would, the guys would dance around, you know, and then the girls would all come in and they'd be honored and then they did special dances with fans and stuff. And the cutest thing was two things. There was this young man, this young librarian, he had a boom box. It, was, it looked like it was about five feet long on his shoulder. And he was <laughs> along with him singing the African songs. And then after everybody settled down, the elders of the village came to Ben and said, your daughter's hair is so beautiful, may we touch it? And so Ben said, let me, yes, I'll go tell the girls. And he said, they, they haven't seen hair like this, and they would like to touch it, they won't hurt you. So they just stood there. They were six, nine, twelve at the time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and they, they were so kind. And then Ben said, one of them offered two cows for you, Lisa. <laughs> Daddy! Daddy! You know? So they, we all kind of went through culture shock. Oh, I also had a Bible study for some American students that were in the Caldwell compound, which was, was a beautiful place in Monrovia for oil people and embassy people to live. And so they would come home back to our wrecks uh, on our school bus, and then one of the parents would pick them up later. And so we had what was called a palaver hut that we had made. You know, palaver. I didn't even know what palaver meant. As people sit and talk to each other, I guess, about important things. That's what the men did while the ladies worked in the fields. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But anyway, um, they, we watched our friend Varney Masakoi build us one. And it was a, a round concrete circle with, with a light concrete floor and then a hole in the middle for a fire. And then he laid palm, big palm leaves in like sh um, shingles. And we watched him do that. Every day it was just so exciting to do that. See? So that's where the kids and I met from the Caldwell compound. And uh, uh, Pastor here asked me to talk about some highlights, some of the best things that happened. Well, my daughter Laura was seven when she said, Daddy, I want to be a Christian, and I want to be baptized. And so we said, that was just great. And then two brothers who came to the Bible study, we had, they also were baptized in the creek. And somebody raise your hand if it's time to go. I'll tell you. Okay. We'll tell you. Okay. Anyway, um, that was really great. I'd like to tell you about the baptism. Kaipo Creek was maybe a quarter mile, not, I don't know how far that is, but it was walk, within walking distance. And because we were in a uh, tropical rainforest, we had rain six months, and then it transitioned to no rain for six months. But they managed to work in 200 inches a year mm. of rain. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so we had to wait through the dry season. So there would be several kids, people. What, they were young people. They were all old enough to know what they were doing. And there was no pressure on our part. Ben just preached about Jesus. And they made these decisions. So.